Games have always taken great inspiration from films, with the ability to accurately replicate their styles increasing as games have gotten more and more cinematic. From spaghetti westerns, to samurai films, mobster movies, swashbuckling adventures, noir detective mysteries, and even 50 sci-fi B-movies. Love letters to film genres, or even specific movies, are more present now than ever. But there's one genre that I think hasn't gotten the video game it deserves. Mr. Bond. James Bond. Spy fiction dominated pop culture in the 1960s, from books to television series and of course movies, popularised particularly by the James Bond series, but also on the small screen with Mission Impossible, The Man From U.N.C.L.E. and The Avengers. Unlike westerns, the spy genre has largely stayed in popularity since its emergence. We're currently awaiting the release of the 25th Bond movie, not including ones made outside of Eon Productions. Mission Impossible is now a staple blockbuster series, and even The Man From U.N.C.L.E. got an underrated 2015 film adaptation. Both Bond and Mission Impossible rank among the top 20 highest earning film franchises of all time, and with such a timeless appeal it's easy to see why. There's not much crossover between my taste in films and my parents taste in films, but for as long as I can remember, and even now, a Bond or Mission Impossible movie is something that we can all sit around the television and enjoy together. The genre has had its influence on some games, Snake Eater being an obvious example, with its Bond-esque opening theme song. I'm still The 1960s setting and supporting cast. But in spite of its clear inspiration, it's a Metal Gear Solid game first and foremost. 007 himself has had numerous video games, from adaptations of the films to original stories, and these have ranged in quality from genre-defining to abysmal and everything in between. But even the best Bond games, in my opinion, fail to capture a lot of the magic of the films, in most cases prioritising stealth and shooting. Which is understandable, they're typically action-oriented games, but these tend to shun one of the most intriguing parts of not just Bond films, but the spy genre as a whole the espionage. For video games about a world-class spy, you don't really do a whole lot of spying. Now yes, some games might involve a level where you sneak or shoot your way through an enemy base to steal a file or hack a computer or something to that effect, but it's always a guided linear experience and usually just serves to push the plot forward. There's no player agency. How you complete objectives is already determined before you even pick up the controller. Contrast this with a series that I think perfectly captures the essence of the spy genre and you don't even play as a spy, you play as a hitman. Mechanically, Hitman would serve as the perfect template for a 60s spy game, with a few adjustments. Now I know not every game needs to be open world, and I certainly believe there's no point in doing it if there's nothing to do outside of the missions. But in this case I think it would suit it. It could take place on a remote island, segmented into several visually distinct regions, ranging from snowy mountains to tropical beaches. An open world would also mean the gadget equipped supercar wouldn't be restricted to scripted driving sequences, serving as a tool you can use at almost any time. It could be customizable, with different gadgets you can equip and upgrade as you progress, maybe even having underwater capabilities later on, giving you another way to infiltrate enemy bases. And it could be summoned at the press of a button similar to the Batmobile in Arkham Knight, allowing you to make a quick getaway. How you approach objectives would be completely up to you. Like Hitman, you would have to investigate, eavesdrop on conversations, capturing and interrogating targets, stealing intel, all giving you information that opens up the amount of ways you can complete your objective. I've been playing Mafia 3 recently, and in that game there's a loyalty system. As you take over rackets, you have to assign them to one of three underbosses. Giving them rackets and completing side quests for them increases their loyalty to you, giving you access to upgrades and perks. But if you neglect one of them, eventually they will betray you, forcing you to eliminate them. I think a similar system could really work for a spy game. You can meet various other agents, some of which might have conflicting objectives. And you can choose who to assist, who to share intel with, even who to bring with you on certain missions. Assisting one of them enough may open the option to romance them, but neglect one of them enough and you could blow their cover, get them killed, or lead them to sell you out. Gadgets are another massive part of the genre, so naturally you would have several at your disposal. And these could have multiple uses in gameplay. A laser watch or pen, for example, could be used in combat to attack enemies, or to cut through locks, windows, fences, and grates. A grapple hook so you can repel into rooms Mission Impossible style would also be a nice feature. Now you might say, well, why not just make a straight up Bond game? And that's a fair point. After all, I prefer a great Spider-Man game than a game where you feel kind of like Spider-Man. And licensed games have improved significantly over the last few years. But what if Rockstar, for example, took that approach with Red Dead? What if instead of an original story, Rockstar bought the rights to the Dollar Trilogy and made a game starring Clint Eastwood? Would that have been great? Well, yes, it almost definitely would have. But had they taken that approach, iconic characters like John Marston and Arthur Morgan might not exist, at least not in the way they do today. 
Being tied to an existing franchise restricts the game from telling its own story, with its own characters, and carve out its own unique identity. You could take Red Dead Redemption 2's story, and if you applied it to any other setting, it would still work. If Dutch was a pirate captain, or a mafia don, or even a modern day outlaw, that story wouldn't lose any of its impact, because it's about the characters. They're not caricatures, they're human beings. The western setting dictates the style and the activities you do in the game, but it's a means of elevating the story, not a crutch it leans on. So while the game would take inspiration from classic spy films, strong characters and an engaging story are essential to its success. The best Bond stories, after all, are the ones that humanise them. It's alright. Quite alright, really. She's having a rest. So, if this game was ever to come into existence, who would make it? Well, Rockstar would be an obvious choice, but unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. Why? Because it was already supposed to happen 10 years ago. At Sony's E3 conference all the way back in 2009, Rockstar announced Agent, a 1970s spy thriller game developed exclusively for the PlayStation 3. At the time, it was being touted as a revolutionary game, with then Take Two president Ben Fetter calling it, quote, genre defining a whole new way of experiencing video games that we haven't really seen before, and Rockstar co-founder Sam Hauser describing it as a game the company has always wanted to make. Unfortunately, we never got so much as a trailer for Agent, and while that statement may give hope that the game will re-emerge at some point, as of November 2018, the trademark for Agent has been abandoned, which optimistically could mean the game has been rebranded, but realistically it's likely been cancelled. So if not Rockstar, then who? Well, I'm a big Sony guy, as any of you familiar with my channel probably know by now, so I would find one of the first party studios tackling the spy genre very interesting. Most of Sony's AAA developers are probably working on sequels to their previous games, but there is one studio that's most likely working on a new IP for the next project. Naughty Dog. Uncharted, after all, clearly took inspiration from 1930s pulp adventure stories, with Doc Savage being a particular influence. But that is something I think Amy Hennig primarily brought to that series, and I'm not sure a game like this would be something Neil Druckmann would be particularly interested in. That said, if I had 100 guesses at what Sucker Punch's first post-infamous game would be, I'm not sure an Akira Kurosawa-inspired samurai game would have ever crossed my mind. So, never say never. With basically every major stealth series, from Splinter Cell, to Metal Gear Solid, to Siphon Filter becoming dormant in the last few years, the market is now wide open and in serious need of some new blood. And I think an homage to the origins of the spy genre would be the perfect thing to fill that void. What do you think? Would you want to play a 1960s set spy genre love letter? Or is there another genre you'd love to see get the video game it deserves? Let me know in the comments below. I have a new video every week, so if you like this and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This tape will self-destruct in five seconds.